Microsoft Loop is an evolution of OneNote. It's not just new paint, new name. There are many net new features that could change your workload as you know it. If you love OneNote, Evernote, Google Docs, you're going to want to know why Loop is a game changer for collaboration. Let me show you how you can stay in the loop with Microsoft Loop. Now let's go. The key use cases for Microsoft Loop are personal and collaborative note taking. Um, you could also use it for content creation, such as writing a blog or an article where team members need to co-create and edit together. It's also ideal for task management. Loop can be linked to tasks in Microsoft Planner or To Do, helping teams manage their tasks and deadlines more effectively. And lastly, just projects in general. Loop can help you create, ideate, and summarize existing projects, saving everyone time and enabling creativity. Now let's take a tour of Loop. To get to Loop, you want to go to loop.microsoft.com. You can also go to the App Launcher in Microsoft 365, and you'll find it there. Loop is in public preview, so it's available for everyone, and it's free to use right now. So what you're looking at here is the Loop home screen, which is going to give you a layout of all the open workspaces that you've created or have collaborated on. To create a new workspace, you wanna click the plus arrow here. I've created a new one just for this demonstration, so we'll click into it. Now that we're inside of a workspace, let's give you a tour of the page structure in Loop. This is really vital to understand. And once you understand this, it will really give you enough to get started with Loop. So we covered a workspace as a collection of loop pages, uh, but also it can contain subpages and links as well. So let's look at a loop page. This is an example of a loop page, but I'm gonna start from scratch by clicking the plus button here. You see you have a couple options, new page, new link. Let's do new page first. So a loop page is a digital canvas. It allows you to fill it with text, images, video, data, links, people, tasks, table, and a lot more. So to get started with a page, there's a few ways you could kind of slice this. You could, if you have an idea for a page in mind, go for it. I would suggest doing the following on your first go around. Check out these templates here on the bottom. This is a real differentiator on these collaboration tools. Sometimes you feel like you're kind of looking down a, a black, a endless abyss, a black hole to get started. These templates allow you to get ideating and collaborating really fast. So let's look at an example. Here's a project link brief. As you can see, it contains an overview. You can have your goals or objectives in this page. You can have your team members, their roles, locations. Um, but you can easily create these tables and really this dynamic content. This is where the evolution of OneNote is happening. You're getting a lot more rich features and embedded uh, uh, media that you can use in these pages. The best part of these templates is that you could choose to include content on them. So you can see what done looks like before you choose the template. So as you can see here, it's all filled in with the project deliverables, uh, relevant links, goals. This is great. It really gives you an idea of how to get started uh, specifically with this template. Okay, now we have our project brief selected. Now, how would you go about adding any elements into here or altering the text? It's a little bit different than Word or OneNote as you're used to today. So you'll click anywhere just like you normally would uh, when you're in a Word document or OneNote, but, um, and you could you know, type out the text like you normally would if you're note taking. But this is where Loop gets really powerful is by hitting the forward slash button. I like to think of the forward slash button as your new insert tab, like in OneNote or Word. Um, if we scroll down, we can see, well, we can see I have some co-pilot options that I'll touch on in a moment here, but you can see I have the option to insert a table, checklist, bulleted list, not gonna talk about every single one of these, but you can see the insert tab is basically here in this vertical menu. So we have templates as well for a task list, a voting table, Kanban board, one of my favorites. Um, you could also uh, communicate through here as well. So if you at mention a person, you could uh, put some emojis in here for some fun or label things as well. Um, where this really shines is images and recorded video. So uh, you have a YouTube video or a video that you want to put on the page, embeds directly into the page. It looks really nice. It also uh, integrates with other Microsoft apps like GitHub and Planner. And there's definitely more to come as uh, this product matures over time. You can also see some Jira and Trello options as well. So let's choose a table. So now we have our, our table options here. You could uh, alter the text, title, link, something like that. If I can type, there you go. 
Um, you can add new rows like you normally would. Um, but let's let's start. Let's uh, let's also get something new here. So let's do a forward slash again. Check out some more examples. Of what we can do here. We could we could put a task list in here. So we can assign tasks. So um, I could say book reservation. And then this is going to use our Microsoft 365 graph data on your tenant. So it's going to pull up relevant contacts in your organization uh, in this assigned to field. So as you can see, I have some of my coworkers here. I'm not going to tick through all of them, but uh, I could select them here and that's going to integrate directly with their Microsoft to do as well. So if you love that app like I do or planner, this directly integrates with, with it, show up in their to do list. You can select a date here uh, and a bucket as well. Here are some other cool things that you can do with the forward slash or that new insert button. So we have our things that we would expect, tables, checklists, numbered lists, but uh, you could also do callouts. Let's see, you could also do um, Kanban boards. Let's take a look at what that looks like. Pretty neat. Um, you could also, if you don't like the board style, you could actually change it into a table here and change them back and forth. All right, let's look at our, some other options here. An inline code for all developers, a voting table. I can't name how many times a week that I just wish we could vote for something a lot easier. And a voting table is such a great way to do this really easily. So if you have your idea for like a team offsite, let's go to Dave and Buster's or something, you could put it here, pros, cons, and then people that have access to this page can then vote on it. So if I put my mouse over it, you can see that I just voted on it. Pretty cool, I love that feature. And it can make uh, making decisions a lot easier and really cut back on the email or teams back and forth. Another cool feature in Loop is its co-pilot extensibility. So if you click the or hit the forward slash button again, you have a couple options right at the top for co-pilot, draft page content or summarize page. Summarize page is by far my favorite. So say you've been working on this project for a while. This page has gotten pretty unruly with updates and content. It's pretty long. You could have Copilot summarize that work, uh, that page for you and make a summary right here at the top of the page or wherever you want to put it. Or uh, if you have stakeholders that are outside of the workspace and just want an email summary, you could, just, uh, you could copy the summary just right here, put that into an email. Um, you could also further refine the, the page summary uh, with Copilot. So if you want to make this clear and concise, you can do that. Um, you could also have it rewrite uh, the page summary if you don't like it or if it needs to be altered. Another thing you can do with Copilot in Loop is that say you want to select some text here and then we'll click the options button. Oh, oh I did it right the first time. So see, we have rewrite with Copilot. So if you, uh, you're rapidly taking notes or something and uh, maybe you just haven't formulated your ideas, uh, articulated them correctly, uh, you can use rewrite with copilot and see what it comes up with um, or if you just want to see if uh, you, you can make something sound more powerful or uh, more impactful you could um, you could do that here make this more impactful so there's an example it's going to create a draft for you um, takes a little bit here pulling it all together and if you don't like what it comes up with you can always have it rewrite it again uh, just by clicking the Copilot button here, and you can see it has the original version. So you could you could alter, or you could click through the different uh, iterations here and decide which one's best. You can also use Draft with Copilot to create content for you directly in your Loop page. You just click Draft with Copilot, and my prompt here is I'm looking for ideas for a travel app that is for travel planning for personal and business. And Copilot is coming up with some names for me here uh, for my app. And there you have it, came up with some app names just from a very simple prompt directly right here in my Loop document. It's also worth mentioning in Loop, you could comment on any element that you've created in a page. Um, so you could kind of take down that email back and forth or Teams messages back and forth with the comments. Um, so the way that you do that is just you want to highlight the element you want to comment on. You'll click the little chat bubbles underneath options and you could comment or boost. Comment, you're probably, you know exactly what that means, but Boost is new, um, at least uh, in these collaboration tools. You could say, uh, you know, you really love uh, that idea, you wanna celebrate, you wanna double click or check this out. Um, these are kind of neat, they're just for fun. So uh, let's just say we, uh, we love this goal 
and you can see what that looks like. Yay! <laughs> Here are some other useful features in Loop. So I'll hit my forward slash again. If you want to give the page a little bit more structure, layout, you could add dividers here. And as well, let's go ahead and pull up the insert tab again. You could also insert a progress tracker. I found this really useful. So you could say what, what work area you're working on. Um, you could pull uh, any internal contacts that are working with you on the project here. Um, what's really useful is you could have a status column here. Um, you could add another option if these aren't enough as well. Uh, your end date, of course, and any blockers. Uh, if, any, if, they, if all projects ran smoothly, we wouldn't, wouldn't have any blockers, but uh, we have a blockers co column because they do. All right, so that is the progress tracker. You could also hit the forward slash again, and we could look at uh, a Q&A element. So this is pretty cool. If you're getting a lot of questions about a specific uh, service, uh, maybe for your support teams, you can start building out a loop Q&A page of frequently asked questions that you're getting and keep on adding to it as well. So those are just a few ways that you can add rich content to your loop pages using the forward slash or the insert button. Another feature I'll show you how to use is the find button. So you just use a simple at uh, in your document in order to bring that up. And what that's going to do is gonna, it's going to search your people in your organization, files and meetings. So for example, if you wanted to make sure you mentioned certain folks that are contributing to this project internally, you could do that here. You could also uh, insert any files that you think would be relevant for this project here as well that uh, might be in a shared space or on your OneDrive. You could insert them here for everyone to look at and collaborate on. And the last thing is meetings. So you can search uh, meetings that you've attended or are on the horizon here as well using that at button. Okay, we've made our workspace in Loop and we've created a Loop page in Loop. Next thing we wanna talk about is subpages. And we all have OneNotes, Evernotes, or Google Docs that have one page and lots of subpages underneath them kind of supporting that project or initiative, what have you. You're probably wondering how you do that in Loop. You could do that in a couple different ways and they're both pretty easy. You could simply just take the Loop page and drag it into another and that will make it a sub page. Uh, if you want to redo that, you could just simply drag it out, put it above the loop page that you just merged it into, and it becomes its own loop page again. Um, you could also go to any loop page and then click the three ellipses, and you could select new subpage, and that will create a new uh, new loop page for you as well. Another useful subpage feature is that you can make hyperlinks to pages, subpages themselves. You can see one, I have a Dave and Buster's one here as an example in one of my uh, loop pages, but I'll show you how you can make one of your own. The way you do it is you're gonna click the purple plus icon and instead of new page, click new link and take the link that you want to be a, its own page or sub page within the loop document. I have Top Golf um, since that is an option for the, the team building event as well. So you just put in the link and the text to display. Here we go. And now we have that here. So if I click on that, it goes immediately to that website. You can do that for just about anything that's a website. Um, and to make that a tub, sub page, you just wanna go ahead and click or drag it to the team building event page. And there we go. And you can rearrange these however you want, take it out too if you don't like it in there. Lastly, let's talk about loop components. Loop components allow you to share and embed a workspace, a loop page, or even in specific sections or elements of your loop page directly into Teams and Outlook. It really helps with collaboration and embedding into messages really takes away the email back and forth or the Teams messages back and forth. So let me show you how this works. The way sharing in Loop works like this. You're gonna have your familiar sharing options located in the top right. That's going to allow you to share the works page, the page links, and then we'll get to the Loop component in a second. So if you start with the workspace, if you share the workspace, it's gonna create a link to this entire workspace, the loop pages that go in here and uh, any resource pages that you have in here. So this entire workspace, pretty straightforward. Next option is page link. So if you want to share only the page with somebody at, uh, at your company, like this team decision page, you can do that here and that's going to copy a link only to this page. The rest of the workspace is private when you do that. Now loop component, this is where it gets really cool. So a loop component, you can embed into an Outlook message or a Teams message. And like I said earlier, that's gonna take down or drive down the amount of messages, uh, Teams back and forth or email back and forth when you're collaborating with uh, other team members. 
So a way to share a loop component is pretty easy. So go to the page, for example, if you wanted to make the page a loop component, you just click on the three options here and click, uh, select share loop component. And that will copy a link directly to your clipboard and you can embed that into an Outlook message or Teams message. Now you could take this a step further. Now say you only wanted this compare ideas table to be shared. You didn't want any of the other information on the page. You just want people to vote for the compare ideas table and keep the rest of it private for right now. You can do that in loop and embed it by highlighting everything that you want to share. And then you can make a loop component by right clicking and select create loop component. Now you can see it just ring fenced this entire area because that's now available to whoever that you send this link to. So you could just select copy loop component and you can use that link uh, in Teams messages and chats everyone has access to only this table. Just want to stress that enough. So you could really just slice and dice what elements of your notebook or your projects that you want with team members instead of giving them the whole thing, which is a lot of what happens like today in, in OneNote, for example, you usually share the entire workbook, they get everything. This is just, you get only what you need. And if it's a specific action, it's a task list, it's a vote or something, you could really just narrow down the focus and put it into the collaboration and communication tools that you're using today. That concludes this tutorial of Microsoft Loop. I hope you feel you are now in the loop with Microsoft Loop. As always, circle back to Gold Standard for the latest tutorials on AI tools. Help me move the needle by liking and subscribing, and let's not take it offline, and feel free to leave your comments below. Thank you for watching.